Hey guys, uh, this is Mike Fox uh, just doing the self-test walkthrough for Chapter 5. I'll give my standard disclaimer, which is I don't have an answer key, so I am I can make mistakes, and I usually do make a couple just because I'm trying to go through it re relatively quickly uh, and because sometimes uh, I'm not the accounting god that you think I am. That's God with a little g, just lest I offend somebody. Um, anyway, so... Uh, Make sure you watch to the end or fast forward to the end uh, just to make sure uh, one of the problems you were watching to see that I covered didn't wasn't one that I made a mistake on because I'll, I'll cover the errors at the end. All right, so let's jump into it. The operating cycle of a merchandising company is ordinarily shorter than that of a service company. That's false because the operating, company of a uh, operating cycle of a merchandiser is usually longer because they have another step in there. They have to convert their cash into inventory and then sell that inventory, as opposed to just selling the service directly. All right, number two, which of the following is a merchandiser that sells directly to consumers? That's a retailer. Remember, a wholesaler sells to retailers usually, or to other wholesalers too. All right, which is true about a wholesaler? It is a company that sells to consumers at a discount. No, not typically. It conducts large sales for consumers on a recurring basis. It sells to another business, which then sells to consu a consuming customer. Or it sells only to manufacturing companies. So the answer is C. Which of the following statements about periodic inventory system is true? So remember, a periodic system is where we add up our goods at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period and then we calculate how much we've sold rather than keeping track the whole time. All right, so companies determine the cost of goods sold only at the end of the accounting period. That's true. Companies continuously maintain detailed records of the cost of each inventory purchase and sale. Um, no, not on the, especially, they, they keep track of the purchases but not the sales uh, that closely as far as what it was. Periodic system provides better control over inventories. That's not true, a perpetual system does. Uh, because you're keeping track each time you make a sale. And the increased use of computerized systems has increased the use of the periodic system. Nope, that's false as well. Actually, the increased use of computerized systems has increased the perpetual system. So A is our correct answer. Could have told you that right at A, but wanted to go through and explain them all. Number five, the operating cycle of a merchandise company is ordinarily blank that, than that of a service firm. So we already said a merchandising company has a longer operating cycle. Which of the following statements is correct? A periodic inventory system provides better control over inventories than does a perpetual system. That's false. We know a perpetual system because we are keeping track of each sale and the amount of inventory that changes in each sale actually provides better control. So B says a perpetual inventory system provides better control over inventories than does a periodic inventory system. So that one is correct. Um, periodic system computes cost of goods sold each time a sale occurs? Nope, that's the perpetual. And a perpetual inventory system computes cost of goods sold only at the end? Nope, that's periodic. So answer is B. Which inventory system will likely be used by a company with merchandise that has a high unit value? So typically, if we have a high unit value, we can use a periodic, I'm sorry, a perpetual system. Um, because it's easy to keep track of a relatively small number of expensive uh, units. All right, number eight. A discount term of 210 net 30 means a 10% cash discount is available if payment is made within 30 days. That's false. What it means, I sound like Dwight, false. What it means is there's a 2% discount available if you pay within 10 days uh, or that the full amount is due without any discount by 30 days. So that's false. Jack's company used a perpetual inventory system and on November 30th purchased merchandise for which it must pay the shipping charges. All right. Which of the following is one part of the required journal entry when Jack's pays the shipping charges of $200? So if they use a perpetual system and uh, they're going to pay the charges on shipping for $200, that means they're going to charge that $200 to their inventory. So the asset inventory will increase. Uh, and then their cash will go down. So a debit to inventory uh, and a credit to cash. So D, debit to inventory, is our correct answer. 
Cosmos Corporations, which used a perpetual inventory system, purchased $2,000 of merchandise on July 5th on account. Credit terms of 210 net 30. It returned $400 of the merchandise on July 9th. Which of the following is one effect when Cosmos pays its bill on July 21st? Okay. So let's see, it purchased it on the 5th, paid its bill on the 21st. So that was not within the 10-day window, so they don't get a discount. Um, so when they pay their bill, they're going to have, they originally owed 2000 and now they're, they got a credit for 400 which they returned. So they now own, owe $1,600. Um, so when they pay their bill, it's going to be a debit to accounts payable for 1600 and a credit to cash for 1600 That's what the journal entry will look like. So it's going to be a credit to cash of 1600 When credit terms of 115 net 60 are offered, how long is the discount period? It's 15 days. You get a 1% discount if you pay within 15 days. Martin Company purchased $4,200 of merchandise on March 1st with credit terms of 310 net 30. If Martin pays on March 11th, what is the cost of this purchase? So that is within the 10-day discount period. So they're going to get a 3% discount, which should be, I'm going to bring up a calculator for this one, so I'm no good at doing it in my head. So again, I'm going to say that it's $4,200 times 0.97, or 97% of it, which is $4,074. Which of the following items does not result in an entry to the inventory account under a perpetual system? Purchase of merchandise? Yep, that, we increase our inventory. The return of inventory to the supplier? Yeah, we would decrease our inventory. Payment of freight costs for goods shipped to a customer? So if we pay the freight cost for the goods shipped or payment of freight cost for goods received from a supplier. So it's going to be C. If we pay the freight cost, we'll claim that it's just an expense that we'll call freight out If for anything we ship. If we pay freight for anything that we're bringing in, that's a cost of acquiring it, and we'll count that as part of our, our inventory account. All right, 14. Sales, returns, and allowances is a contra revenue account. And that's true. It's a re it offsets the account sales, which is a revenue account. Sales discounts is a contra asset account. Nope, it's a contra revenue account. So that's false. Question 16, Marsh Inc. paid for freight costs on merchandise it shipped to a customer. In what account will Marsh record its cost in a perpetual inventory system? Again, when we ship inventory, we call it freight out usually which is an expense account. On what amount of sales, but what amount is a sales discount based? Let's see, so the invoice price plus freight in, invoice less discount, invoice price plus freight out, invoice price less returns and allowances. The answer is D. 18, Myers and Company sold $1,800 of merchandise on account to Oscar Inc. on March 1st with credit terms of 210 net 30. Oscar returned $500 of the merchandise due to poor quality on March 3rd. If Oscar pays the purchase on March 11th, so within the 10-day window, what entry does Myers make to record the receipt of payment? So first of all, it was 800 less a discount of 500, I'm sorry, a return of 500. So that leaves them owning, owing $1,300, and then the discount, we can calculate, so $1,300, and it was a 2% discount, so they're going to owe 0.98 or 98% of 1274 So there's our cash, 1274 there will be a sales discount of $26, and there's the accounts receivable of 1300 in a perpetual inventory system, which account will the seller credit when merchandise is returned by the customer? So if we, if the, if they, let's see, if we get a return, then we're going to credit our 
let's see, I just need to talk myself through what the transaction would look like. Uh, so when we make the sale, we would debit cash or accounts receivable, and we would credit our inventory account. Now when the customer returns the merchandise, we're going to debit our inventory account, and we're going to credit our accounts receivable or our cash. You know what? Sometimes things are too complicated to talk through in your head, so it's best just to figure it out. It's better to take a minute to figure out the right answer than to talk yourself in circles. So if I make a sale to a customer, it's either going to be cash or accounts receivable, depending on how they pay, and the cost of goods sold. It's also going to be my asset, let's see, inventory will be going down, and our, if I take that back, this is going to be sales revenue. That's why I was confusing myself trying to do it in my head. And then I'm also going to be recording my cost of goods sold at my cost, and my inventory account will go down. So that's the, the transaction of the original sale. So upon the return, and again, we're talking about a perpetual system. So upon the return, then I'm going to debit an account that will be my sales returns and allowances account. I'm going to credit by cash or AR. And I want to debit my inventory, assuming that the inventory is not, you know, defective or something. Uh, and I'm going to credit my cost of goods sold. All right. So after all that talking, the question was, which accounts will the seller credit where the merchandise is returned? So it would be the cash or the accounts receivable account and the cost of goods sold account. So accounts receivable, cost of goods sold. Sorry about that, but sometimes I have to talk myself through these. All right. Which statement is true for the seller? The sales discount account is credited for defective merchandise returned by a customer. The sales discount account is debited for defective merchandise returned by the customer. The sales returns and allowances account is credited for defective or the sales return. Okay, so first of all, we know it's not a discount when somebody returns it, so it's got to be either C or D. Then we can look back at the thing I just worked up here, and we would say upon the return, our sales returns and allowances account is debited. Because what that's doing is it's offsetting the revenue. Okay, We don't want to just back the revenue out. We want to always show the sales we've made. So we create a contra revenue account called sales returns and allowances that offsets the amount of revenue. So we can say, here's how much we made through sales, and then here's the amount that we had to, we had to write off because of returns. All right, 21. A retailer makes a $100 sale with terms of 210 net 30 in the first month. The customer returns $20 of merchandise on credit for credit on account. What journal entry would the retailer record when payment is received within the discount period under a perpetual inventory system? All right, so if it's a $20 sale, I'm sorry, $100 sale, and they return $20, that leaves $80 that's owed. And then if they pay within the period, they're going to get a 2% discount from that $80 that's owed which means they will owe 
98% of the $80 or $78.40. So when payment is received, our cash will go up by $78.40, we'll record a sales discount of $1.60, and we'll have an account receivable of $80. So that is A. They're trying to trick us here on sales discounts versus purchase discounts. Um, we are the seller, so we're going to record that as a sales discount. Which of these accounts normally have a debit balance? All right, so sales discount, sales returns and allowances, both sales discounts and sales returns and allowances, neither. So these are both contra revenue accounts. Revenue accounts normally have a normal balance, uh, normally have a normal balance on the credit side. So contra revenue accounts would have a normal balance on the debit side. So C, both sales discounts and sales returns and allowances. Uh, 23, a credit sale of 750 is made on June 13th. Terms of 210 net 30, on which uh, a return of $50 is granted. What is the amount received as payment in full on June 23rd? Okay, I, I have this sneaking feeling that we're gonna have like three of these that, that I'm gonna miss because I'm not counting the days right or something and it's gonna say, nope, that was outside of the discount term. So we'll see uh, when we get to the end. So $700 sale, less $50 is 700 bucks. Um, if they took a 2% discount within that period, uh, that would say, that would be 700, 98, $686 uh, should be the amount of cash that has to be there to pay it off. Which statement is true when recording the sale of goods for cash in a perpetual inventory system? Let's see, sale of goods for cash. Only one journal entry is necessary. It will record the cost of goods sold and reduce the inventory. Well, that's not true. Uh, so we know it's going to take two journal entries, uh, one to record the receipt of cash and the revenue, and the other to record the cost of goods sold and to reduce inventory. So that's C. So anytime we do a sale of goods, there's, there's one to record the amount of money we're bringing in. That's at the retail price. And then there's another entry to record the cost of the goods we're selling, and that's at the cost. All right, which of the following statements is correct? A company which uses a perpetual inventory system needs only one journal entry when it sells merchandise. No. A company which uses a perpetual inventory system needs two journal entries when it sells merchandise. That's true. A company which uses a perpetual inventory system debits inventory and credits cost of goods sold. Well, that's not true. All right. 26. Uh, what type of accounts are sales returns and allowances and sales discounts? We've already learned those are contra revenue accounts, meaning revenue accounts with a normal balance that is contrary to a, a normal revenue account. Uh, gross profit is the difference between net sales and cost of goods sold. True. Sales return, uh, sales revenue total to $10,000. Sales returns and allowances are $500 and sales discounts are $1,000. How much is net sales? So remember, net sales is just sales revenue minus sales returns and allowances minus sales discounts. So that would be $8,500. 29, net income is $15,000. Operating expenses are $20,000 and net sales total 75,000, how much is the cost of goods sold? Okay, so they want us to kind of deconstruct an income statement here. Let me bring up an Excel spreadsheet again just to try to make this a little easier. So we have net income, just down at the bottom of 15,000. We have operating expenses, of 20,000, we have net sales of 75,000, and it wants us to figure out cost of goods sold. So we know that our gross profit, so net sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit, right? 
And then we know that gross profit minus operating expenses and then any other expenses, but we'll just assume they're not there, equals net income. So we know our gross profit must equal our operating expenses plus our net income. And it wants us to say what our, what was it, cost of goods sold is. So our cost of goods sold then must equal our net sales minus our gross profit. And now it should all work. 75,000 in net sales minus 40,000 cost of goods sold gives us 35,000 in gross profit minus 20,000 operating expenses gives us 15,000 net income. So it all fits together. So our cost of goods sold, $40,000. Which of the following is classified in an income statement as a non-operating activity? So advertising expense, nope, that's part of our operating. Those are regular costs we have to pay to run the business. Interest expense, that is the one that we consider non-operating. Why? Because the operator, the manager, doesn't have control over interest expense. Freight out, that's an operating expense. And cost of goods sold, also an operating expense. All right, which of the following is classified as an, in an income statement as a non-operating activity? So same type of question. Uh, receiving dividend revenue from an investment, returning merchandise, Receiving an allowance for merchandise damaged in shipment or paying for a, purch for a purchase of inventory. So receiving dividend revenue from investment, that's not our normal sort of revenue, the type of revenue we earn from our regular day-to-day -day business. So that would be our non-operating item. Now I'm a little nervous to grade this test. Let's see how we did. 97%. So it looks like I missed number 20. All right. Miss number 20. Let's take a look at it and figure out what I did wrong. All right. Which statement is true for a seller? I put sales returns allowance account is credited for defective merchandise returned by the customer. And this says the sales return allowance account is debited for, okay, so I just made a mistake. In fact, oh, well, I already deleted it all, but on our little spreadsheet we worked out earlier, uh, we even showed that sales returns and allowance is debited. So just an error probably of trying to hurry. And that's it. Hope it was useful to you. Have a great day and good luck on the test.